My name is Jody Middendorf and I have been going on Boundary Waters canoe camping trips for over 15 years now. And as much as that makes me feel old, I also feel that I have some things to share with those who want to get started or who just want some gear ideas for their next canoe camping trip. I have a bunch of supplies behind me. Some of the gear you have heard me talk about in previous gear videos, a lot of it though is new and I have new perspectives. Basics, of course you need a canoe and a canoe paddle. I personally don't use a seat for my canoe, but there are seats you can strap onto the canoe seat and then it has a backrest built into it, a fabric sort of seat. If you are interested in a canoe seat, you can look them up, Google it. They should just snap right onto almost any canoe seat type. If you are bringing your own canoe, of course you probably already have this, but you would need canoe pads and straps to put it on your car safely for travel. This season I really like the Granite Gear packs. For canoe camping trips, it holds so much stuff. Uh, this granite gear pack has the inside here, that's one big pocket, very nice to fill. They also have spot on the outside. I like to put certain things in here that I need easy access to. If you are an EpiPen user or medicine user, you could put that in here for easy access as well. There are also a lot of different places to attach little things to the backpack. We like to attach water bottles. I have a hairbrush on here, some extra hair ties, lots of carabiners. We like to add stuff to the outside of our pack. We just really like the comfortability of this pack and the fact that you can strap it around your waist nicely. You might be noticing that we have a second pack here as well. This is my Duluth pack. This is the number two. I really like the Duluth pack aesthetic better than the Granite Gear aesthetic, but the Granite Gear just holds so much stuff. The Duluth packs are very nice also, good option. The packs are just so sturdy. I've never had an issue sturdy wise. The This Duluth pack I use if I'm going maybe on a solo trip and I just need a smaller pack in general. Otherwise, Corey and I have been using this pack actually as our food pack. So we put plastic liners inside of these packs and inside of the plastic liner, I will put anything with a scent. Not only food and cookware, but even bait, fishing bait if it has a scent to it, mosquito spray, sunblock if it's scented, anything, chapstick, anything like that, I will put in my food pack. And then we hang this food pack at night from a tree so that all of our scented things are out of camp and ideally up in the air at a safe distance. Um, I do know that bears can climb trees, but we do hang our packs as recommended by the Forest Service. Speaking of packs, we bring a rope to hang our pack. This is overkill. This is much more sturdy than you would need. Also, this bag is falling apart, uh, but we do bring a nice sturdy rope to be able to hang our packs. We find it to be very helpful. There are much thinner, like paracord, that you could hang your pack with. I find that that just doesn't feel good on my hands, um, but it is a lot smaller and works just fine as well. But this is what we use to hang our pack. This camp pillow is brand new. Corey purchased it right before our last camping trip. The tag is still on it. I think he really liked it. And it's a bigger pillow. You can get small camp pillows. You can get camp pillows that pack down really well, but Corey is very specific about his pillows. We really like this one. Wise Owl Outfitters, the Snoozy Camp Pillow and Traveler. That has been very nice for our one camping trip we use it for this season. This is a Unigear Camp Camphy P3 Air Sleeping Bag. Again, all of these things will be listed in the description if you like them. This sleeping pad was sent to me for free by Unigear. It's not sponsored though, I don't have to say anything about it. And I will say that we bought another one of these for Corey because this is the most comfortable sleeping pad I have ever slept in the outdoors on. I can't say enough good things about it. They have different sizes. They have extra long. They have, it's wide enough for me. I've got big hips. It's comfy. It's comfy. It's beautiful. I love it. The bag actually acts as a way to inflate the sleeping pad. So if you get this sleeping pad, make sure you know that the bag that it's in, this attaches into the air hole of the sleeping pack and you use the bag to push air into it. You can look that up. Love this sleeping pad. I will buy another sleeping pad if this one gets destroyed for sure. I love this. Sleeping bag. I really like the sleeping bag because it packs down really small. That's really my favorite thing about it. It's not super warm. It's a 32 degree 
a 650 FP down sleeping bag. I will say this is not comfortable at 32 degrees. This is comfortable at like 55, 60 degrees at the coolest. Um, but it packs down really small, so I love this sleeping bag because of that. This is Hike and Bike brand. And then this is our tent. So this tent is probably like a two, maybe three person tent if you really want to snuggle. Um, but this is Unigear Space Dome 2. I love this tent because it's easy to put up. It has vestibules to put your camping supplies under so that it's out of the rain without being in the tent. And it's pretty. I think this tent is so pretty, which I know doesn't matter to everybody, but to me, it just makes it more fun to have a pretty tent. This was sent to me for free as well. Again, not paid to say anything nice about it, but I would buy this again in a heartbeat. Also, it like has this case that you put the sleeping tent in, and this case is not difficult to put the tent in. The tent is rolled up in here with the stakes, with the poles, and then this folds in like this, and then you cinch it down and buckle it, and the tent is in a case, and it's not, not a fight to put it in here. I really like that. So looking at the activities you can do at camp besides sitting, relaxing, watching the water, going for a paddle, going for a swim, I like to sometimes bring things to do inside the tent if the bugs are really bad or if it's just raining or something like that. I personally like to bring colored pencils and a pad. I like to draw each campsite that I stay at so that I have that for memory. Uh, we bring a cribbage set with cards. Corey and I really like to play cribbage. We also bring fishing gear. So we actually invested in telescopic fishing poles that go down really small and they fit in here. This has both Corey's and mine in this pack. And that way when we're portaging our fishing poles, the fishing poles aren't catching on all the trees. We also have a tiny little tackle box and we have our reels in this bag. So we have a little tiny bag, we put this stuff in and then it just packs up nicely in our pack. We bring this saw for cutting little logs or wood pieces for having a campfire. I prefer this over an ax. Some people bring both. Some people have recommended in my comment comments on YouTube to bring gloves that are cut resistant. You could do that as well. A first aid kit I think we got off of Amazon. Um, it's not comprehensive so we did buy other things that we thought were important to have in here and put it in here as well so this is the first aid kit plus our essentials that we put in there this little pack you can tell we like to use these little packs this is oh and these pack things we got off Amazon for super cheap we don't like these for putting clothes in and I'll get to that but for other little things we like it we like to bring two headlamps one for Corey and one for myself there's another headlamp in here and then this is a light that we hang on the inside of the tent for reading, for playing games. When it's dark out, it just has on button. This one has different brightness levels. Um, and then this is magnetic. I also like to pack bear spray. Um, in general, bears in the Boundary Waters, they're black bears. They're not trying to go after people. If you make noise, they'll go away. Sometimes at certain campsites, there are bears who know that they can get food from people. That's dangerous. Bear spray is something that just makes me feel better, especially when I'm camping by myself. If I have to go out of my tent at night because I hear something, I do grab my bear spray. So some people say it's really not necessary in Minnesota, but it does make me feel better. So I bring it. Another activity for around camp is pass the pigs. I really like this game for camping and for at home. It's a pretty simple game with easy rules. The pigs do get dirty but it's kind of a silly game where you throw the pigs and then depending on how they land, if they're upside down, sideways, you get different points. And then I have a little notepad in here for point keeping. This is actually a pretty dirty bag. It's stained, I don't know why, but this is where I keep tampons, toothbrush, toothpaste, hair ties, and I have extra matches in here that are not the normal matches that I keep with my cooking stuff just because this is always zipped and it's another place where I might have dry matches if I really need them. This is toilet paper and hand sanitizer. I usually put toilet paper in a Ziploc bag and then put a little mini hand sanitizer in there as well. And then at camp, I leave this by the latrine. 
We like to bring bath wipes to wipe down. This one even has like instructions for use on the back. It says start with your face, then neck, then chest, then arms. And this is a camp chair. I usually either bring a camp chair or a hammock depending on the trip and what the trees are like. Sometimes I don't know. If I don't know, I'll probably just bring a chair. Every once in a while I bring both a hammock and a camp chair, but I like that this one is small. It's kind of heavy, but it's worth it if there's no log to sit on by the fireplace. This is something new this season. Corey and I, last minute before our last Boundary Waters trip, decided to stop and pick up this net jacket. It just goes over your jacket or over your clothes. Um, I had not purchased one previously because I typically just wear long sleeves and long pants if it's buggy. Um, but this covers your whole head and body. And honestly, this was a lifesaver. I cannot tell you how excited I was to use this over and over and over and over and over all summer. <laughs> this thing is amazing. You can be outside and not have to have long sleeves on and not have bugs on you. I don't know what took me so long to buy this. I had bug nets before that just were on my head. There are very expensive versions of these. This was like $20 and works perfectly. <laughs> I don't know what brand it is. Doesn't really have any tags on it. We bought it at a gas station on our way to Ely. Also rain gear. I like to bring a rain jacket and rain pants. These are rain pants I got for like a dollar at a garage sale last summer. Doesn't have to be crazy expensive. This Eddie Bauer rain jacket is too warm for most people most of the season. I don't mind being hot. I love it. But many rain jackets that are thick and rubbery like this are just too hot. But I can use this in the fall, spring, and summer. I don't care if it's hot in the summer. I love it. But beware when you're buying a rain jacket. Think about how hot that will be on a hot day when it's raining. Sometimes you don't want to be wet, but you also don't want to be hot. For our Boundary Waters trips, I spray our clothing with permethrin. Permethrin is not great, in my opinion, for you. But it really works. It will keep mosquitoes away, it's supposed to keep jiggers away, ticks. I think that the benefits outweigh the risks for me, but definitely look into this for your own family. Also, to keep bugs away, I use this, it has dead mosquitoes in it, I just noticed that. I use this uh, Thermacell. I've had mixed results with this in past years. It seemed like it wasn't working, but this year I really like it and I feel like it has been working for us. This you just turn on. You can hypothetically attach it to your bag or to your pants while you're hiking. We usually just set it up at camp. For the Boundary Waters, I really like to use these fabric maps. This is a True North Company map. Um, please sponsor me. <laughs> these maps I get a lot of questions about in the comments. I get emails asking about how I got my maps printed on fabric. I didn't do it. It's a company that does it. They do it for the Boundary Waters. Uh, I love it because if it gets wet, fine. If I drop it in the lake, fine. I can use it as a, you know, tie it for a bandana or whatever. That's fine. I really just like it. The paper maps, even if they're waxed, they're kind of water resistant, but this is like really water resistant and I could just wash it if it gets dirty. I also bring a compass. This isn't any fancy compass and I honestly don't usually use it, but I have it in case I need to use it and it just ties on to my pack usually and I have it dangling on the outside. This is a camp towel, a camp towel I really like. Um, in the past I've just used regular like hand towels from home when I go swimming. I really like this to wrap my hair up in after I shower at camp or after I go swimming in the lake. It dries quickly and it comes in this little pack. As far as shoes go, I usually bring water shoes and I bring either a pair of hiking boots or tennis shoes. I usually have two pairs. I like to have a wet shoe and a dry shoe. My wet shoe is these water shoes. These are Sequay shoes. Also, these were sent to me for free, but this is not sponsored. I'm not paid to say anything nice about them. I will say it's not the highest quality. They are falling apart, but I use them so much, and I use them heavily, and I use them in rough conditions. There's no ankle support. There's no any sort of support. This is for people who like the idea of barefoot walking, building your foot muscles, letting your feet breathe, that kind of footwear. Um, but also a little bit of protection. So if you slip on a, on a rock, like they're, they just have extra grip for walking in water. Um, and I feel because the foot bends, I can kind of get a better grip when I'm stepping in and out of the canoe. 
but I know that there's gonna be some controversy with these shoes because some people really like to use hiking boots as their water shoes, um, like old hiking boots that they don't care if they get wet and musty. This is what I use. And then I bring dry shoes, either tennis shoes or hiking boots to wear around camp. If it rains, I'll put these on so that my dry shoes don't get wet. I really like to have dry shoes. And then this is my life jacket. I like this life jacket because it has a lot of arm space. I don't feel like my arms can't move for paddling. There's not a lot going on in the arm area. And it has pockets. In my pockets, I keep sunglasses. I keep a mosquito head net at the ready so if the mosquito body thing is tucked away, then I still have one I can grab. I keep my permit, my fishing license, and there's a lighter in here. I keep a lighter in here in case I emergency need a lighter. Um, and then there's trash in here as well that I picked up on past trips. If I find trash lying on the ground or on the portage, I will just put it in one of these pockets. I like to pack all of my clothing in dry bags. I will read a list of clothing that I typically pack for a Boundary Waters trip. But the dry bags, I have a Sea to Stomach dry bag and a side-by-side -side brand dry bag. These are really good. If you just try to order a cheap dry bag off of the internet, they don't work the same. So these bags are a little bit stretchy, like just enough. I can fit all of my clothes usually that I need for a trip in here and then roll it down and squeeze the air out and then close it up. Other cheaper dry bags, they don't stretch right. They don't, it just doesn't work the same. Um, this is just another layer to try and keep your clothing dry while it's inside of your pack. So I still put all of this stuff inside of a pack, inside of a plastic bag in that pack. But I do put my clothes in here for an extra layer. So like I said, I'll take the portage pack and I'll put this massive, almost like garbage bag style bag in there and then put everything inside of that. And then sometimes this I'll use as a pillow to sleep. So all my clothes will be in here. I'll sleep using this as a pillow. Clothing I typically pack on a Boundary Waters trip. Raincoat and pants, one or two long sleeve shirts, one warm sweater or puffy jacket, one short sleeve or tank top, swimsuit or swim clothes, one pair of shorts, one to two pairs of pants, depending on the duration of the trip and how much rain is forecasted, two pairs of shoes, the wet shoes and the dry shoes, three pairs of socks, one wet pair of socks, one dry pair of socks, and one emergency dry pair of socks because I really like to have dry feet, one pair of hat and mittens, even if I'm going in July. Still bring a pair of hat and mittens because the Boundary Waters gets cold at night. Extra underwear, as many as I need, comfortable active bras, a hat for sun protection, mosquito net, and glasses if you need that. Don't forget EpiPen, sunscreen, and pet stuff if your pet needs stuff as well. Whether they need a bug protection or sun protection, or don't forget the pet food if you're bringing a pet. Also kids stuff. If you have small children, you might need to adjust a little bit. This is a uh, dish soap. I like to use Dawn dish soap for cleaning dishes still away from camp. You have to be far away from camp in the woods. To wash dishes or to wash my hair or to bathe, I use a Sea to Summit kitchen sink. This is a 10 liter and this is one of my favorite things for camping. You fill it with water and then it acts as a water bucket and when you set it down, it holds the water in it. It has to have enough water though. If there's not enough water, the water will just spill out. But if there's enough water, it holds its form and I use that to wash my hair, wash my face, wash my clothes, everything. Bug spray, I always bring extra bug spray. I usually bring some kind of natural soap for washing my body away from shore still. Remember, don't, don't use soap in the lake, even if it's biodegradable. I bring a knife for anything I might need a knife for. Um, if I am going fishing, I might bring a fillet knife. We've used this as a fillet knife and that was fine. This is a mark and all. For cooking, we have a cook fuel set up. And then in here, I have the MSR cook stove that twists on here and then opens up. So this sets up like this. You use this to turn the fuel on or off. I have a little lighter that I keep here to light it. And then a little pot that I put on here. This pot, I don't really cook food food in, but I'll boil water in it and it collapses down to be easily packed on a trip. 
Um, in here, I will boil water for coffee, for a lot of dry instant meals. If I'm going to make something that it does not need boiled water to make it reconstitute, I might bring a little tiny fry pan just from home to make fish in, for example, if I'm gonna fry fish. I like to bring coffee. This is instant coffee mix. This is fine. Otherwise, I bring coffee that comes in like little tea bags. So it looks like a tea bag, but it's for coffee. Um, some people like to do pour over. I haven't tried that. I have done French press, but I always remember my coffee. As far as food goes, I'll bring dry food. I will bring charcuterie board type stuff. I like to bring apples for fruit because they last, or oranges, they're pretty durable if they get tossed around a little bit. Um, usually I like to bring pizza rolls for the first night that are frozen when I leave home so that they're still kind of cold and usually not destroyed by the time I get to the first campsite. I like to bring a cup, a coffee cup. I don't usually bring a plastic cup unless it can handle heat. I like to bring something that can handle heat so I can put cold stuff in here if I decide to have juice from juice packets. I can also have coffee in here. This is the one I use and I got this from Voyager Brewing Company in Grand Marais. Um, otherwise, I like this because it can clip on to stuff on the outside of my pack. Otherwise, another good one is Unigear. This is like a little pot type thing that also can be used as a mug and it's just kind of cute and packs down fun. Um, I always bring a water bottle. Don't forget to bring a water bottle. And then to fill the water bottle, you need some kind of water filtration system. You can get drops, iodine drops, you can get pump filter. This is a gravity filter that we just decided to finally try this year and we liked it. Um, this is a Be Free Katadin uh, 6 liter water filter. This is plenty. It goes pretty fast. We finally caved and did it. Gotta say it's better than our pump even though I'm kind of terrified of it getting moldy. I also bring a towel or pot holder of some type. This I use for both. I just hand knitted it. Um, this is our pot holder slash scrub it up dub towel. And then some kind of plate, fork, etc. for at camp. I like this because Cory can use one side, I can use the other side for meals. And then we have our, this is Cory's bamboo fork he likes. And then I have the fork and spoon knife set that came with the set. And that all goes in here. We could honestly put this in here as well. And that would fit. And then it just packs up nicely. And if there's leftovers and you want to save it for later, it does have like a rubber seal, so it's kind of like a Tupperware for your camping. So that is everything I have here for today. If there's anything that you're thinking of that I didn't talk about, put it in the comments in the description so we can kind of learn from each other what other things we like to use. 